In these uncertain economic times, you've got to do whatever you can to save money. One of our biggest expenses can be our cars, especially when unexpected repair bills hit. Not anymore. If you own a vehicle with less than 130,000 miles, is less than 12 years old, has a warranty about to expire, or even no warranty at all, you could stop paying for car repairs. Roadside assistance, towing, and rental coverage are all included. Don't wait for the next repair. Make one free call right now to see if you qualify. If your vehicle is less than 12 years old, has less than 130,000 miles, even if it's out of warranty, paying for car repairs can become a thing of the past. Call us right now and get your car protected before your next repair bill hits. Get protection and no more repair bills. Call 800-696-1030. Again, 800-696-1030. That's 800-696-1030. 800-696-1030. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. All writers are prone to becoming so attached to our characters and stories that we struggle to see why a passage may not be working. It takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our writing to full maturity. At Black Wolf Editorial Services, we strive to enable writers to develop and grow, shaping stories into masterpieces that can stand the test of time. Editing services are provided for all genres and all age categories. Services range from critiques of the short story through to the line edits of the full-length novel and copy editing for those preparing for publication. We also offer assistance on generating a writer's file for your website, as well as help with those book blurbs and promotional material. We won't abandon you to the masses. We want to celebrate with you and your successes. Black Wolf Editorial Services. Nurturing your writing into maturity. For a full list of services and prices, visit us at blackwolfeditorial.com. Individuals and businesses with tax problems, listen carefully. Do you feel like you're losing control over your finances? If you owe over $10,000 in back taxes or have unfiled tax returns, we can help you take back control. The IRS is the largest and most aggressive collection agency in the world, and they can seize your bank account, garnish your paycheck, close your business, and file criminal charges. Take control of your tax problems now by calling the experts at Tax Mediation Services and take advantage of the Fresh Start program and new laws that may allow us to negotiate a settlement for the lowest amount possible. Our team of tax attorneys and enrolled agents can stop collections and get you protected so you can take control of your financial future. Tax Mediation Services is accredited by the Better Business Bureau. Call now for a free case review and a price protection guaranteed quote. Call Tax Mediation Services now at 800-610-9050. That's 800-610-9050. 800-610-9050. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable, everyday carry, or a tough-as-nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 
dollars a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than three dollars a pill. Call one eight hundred five one six seventy six zero two today and save up to five hundred dollars and get forty pills for just ninety nine dollars. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at one eight hundred five one six seventy six zero two to take your call right now. Call one eight hundred five one six seventy six zero two. That's one eight hundred five one six seventy six zero two. Again, one eight hundred five one six seventy six zero two. Is debt beating you down? You need discipline. You need the Debt Ninja. If you've been caught in a financial trap and need to be set free, then you need the Debt Ninja. Want to stop those harassing collection calls? Start saving thousands in interest and fees and get out of debt fast? Then you need to call the Debt Ninja. The Debt Ninja will find the best companies across the country that will help you consolidate all your bills into one easy payment, reduce your payments by 30 to 50%, and get you out of debt fast. If you have unsecured debt of $10,000 or more, such as credit cards, loans, or medical bills, call the Debt Ninja for a free 15-minute consultation. Call 800-826-1246. 800-826-1246. That's 800-826-1246. Call today. The Debt Ninja. Ahoy, hoy, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Loftus Party. You have found it. Congratulations. It's the best thing on the internet. It's the best thing on your radio. Uh, it's an optimistic. Uh, optimistic? Uh, that's my new word, Andrew. Optimistic. <laughs> Great word, Michael. It's the best word ever. I'm writing it down. I am optimistic. Up with people and optimistic. How you doing today, Andrew Apple? I'm doing very well, although I have to make a declaration to all of our listeners before we start, Michael. Okay. To all of the people who are loftus or bust, you're being ridiculous. Ha! Loft, you know what? I, there was a person on Twitter who said that I should uh, I should run for president. So uh, they, I think they did get ripped off. They uh, did get ripped off. Huh? Okay. Well, I mean, okay. So if you were running for president, what would be my position in your cabinet? You know what? I would put you uh, as you'd be like Secretary of Commerce. <laughs> I don't trust you with heavy weapons. Uh, I don't think you've ever been in the military. That is true. Uh, Although I have I don't shot feel... uh, the AR-15 a couple of times before. That's a that, that's quite a weapon. Yeah, yeah, that's a good time. See, um, I've fired a um, uh, an AK-47. I did the old school like uh, gun like the gangsters would use in the 1930s. Yeah, the that's Tommy a lot gun. of fun. Yeah, the Tommy gun. A lot of pull with the Tommy gun. That's why you got to do those short bu- bursts. I- I'm having a hard time talking today. You want to do the short bursts because everything it wants to go up and to the left, up and to the left. So you threw down the little uh, the little uh, Sarah Silverman thing there with your being ridiculous. Yes, yeah, yes, indeed. You know when the DNC decides to take uh, two comedians and throw them up on stage and then make them stretch because uh, nobody realized they had to wheel out Paul Simon a couple of minutes early. That's apparently what you end up getting. Well, I like how the, I like how your excuse is just like baked in there. Poor um poor Al Franken. That that lunatic. He had to go be a comedian again. He spent so long trying to shake that I'm not a comedian anymore. I'm a senator now image. Then they get up there and they tell him to vamp. Just start vamping. And you know, he actually responded to that and I think he gave a very articulate response which was he believes in Hillary Clinton and if Hillary Clinton asks him to be funny again, he's going to be funny again. Look at that. And if Hillary Clinton asks him to lie again, he'll lie again. All right. And yeah. if Hillary Clinton asks him to rig an election, he'll rig an election. Now, I'm pretty How sure offended. that senators can't rig elections, Michael. Well, if she asks him to lie, if she asks him to do something untoward and undemocratic, Sarah Silverman, the moxie, the moxie on, on Sarah Silverman to say you're being ridiculous – See that's the that's my big takeaway and I don't want to get I don't want to start off angry. I don't want to be a, an angry person, but for Sarah Silverman to tell people they're being ridiculous when they're offended by someone trying to steal an election, it's that's beyond the beyond. So there's actually a couple of things that came out about that that I thought were interesting this week. So friend of the show, John Favreau, he actually made a response to this and his response was, well, number 1 
you should absolutely be upset about this. But at the same time, if you're relying on either the DNC or the RNC to actually help you get a boost in the polls, you're pretty much set to lose anyways. And secondly, people have gone through the 19,000 emails, and of them, only about 11.6% of them had anything to do with Sanders. And one of them said, eat my butt. That's wonderful. Uh, guess what? What? I don't care. I don't care. They tried to – they did. They rigged – they didn't even just – it's not like they tried and failed. They tried and succeeded. And all of that, as bad as that is, the other thing, uh, the bigger issue, like I was talking about last week, is the collusion with the media. They own CNN. They own the New York Times. They own the Boston Globe. They own MSNBC. That is – that is the – we're getting the official state-sponsored message to go out and vote for the official state-sponsored candidate. That's horrible. And if you're not outraged by that, wreck your car. Go well, out and wreck your car. And again, my response is I'm no more outraged by that than the fact that the Republicans, they own Fox News. You know, they own The Blaze. Both sides have their outlets. And what All right, you okay, really be upset okay, about is okay. the fact that nobody reports the news anymore. Why do you think Fox News started? Why do you think? Because Roger Ailes saw that there was a place for it. Yes, because NBC, CBS, ABC, CNN, Headline News, they were all in the tank for the liberals. So somebody realized, oh, I should do counter-programming where I, I don't make conservatives look like idiots. And that is how – and that's what kills me. That's how, that's how whacked out of balance it is. You've got the major news networks all in, all in cahoots. We're going to start using cahoots now because that Facebook video used cahoots uh, of ours, and it's destroying. All the major news outlets are in cahoots with the left. So Roger Ailes starts Fox News, and everybody makes Fox News the villain in this scenario. It's laughable. It's laughable. So I will laugh now on cue. Ha, 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 ha. Actually, I'll tell you what amazed me the most this week is that now actually other outlets are getting better at using the Fox model. Like we talked about last week, Fox does have opinion programming. Hannity is opinionated programming. Uh, Bill yeah. O'Reilly is opinionated programming, and they don't even try to deny this. So when Bill O'Reilly started talking about slaves last week, uh, yeah. some of the more liberal blogs picked it up, and that's how it made it into the mainstream media. And then he goes around and then gets upset that the liberals are now using the same techniques that Fox News uses when their opinion programming makes it into the news. I thought that was a really interesting commentary on where we are in the media in general. Well, it's all opinion broadcasting. Do you think Chris Matthews is news? Of course not. Do you think? Do you think? Yeah, it's all opinion broadcasting. And then, and then, but, but like Chris Matthews, though, somebody needs to tell Chris Matthews he's not a journalist because all the time he's like, we have a responsibility as journalists. I'm like, you're not a journalist. You had a thrill up your leg. You're the thrill up your leg opinion guy. I like you. I enjoy your show, but it's a fairy tale. It's an absolute fairy tale. <laughs> The worst is Lawrence O'Donnell. That guy's like a mad scientist. I think I'm alone. I think I'm a, I'm alone in my dislike of Lawrence O'Donnell. Well, I think you just give him a lot more clout than he actually has. I mean, his show I know. it it gets less than a million viewers a night. And you know what? You know who beats you know who beats Lawrence O'Donnell? Who's that? Me on the History Channel. My show on the History Channel does better than Lawrence O'Donnell. I did one episode. And there you go. But that's uh, – this is great, but that's why there's uh, the TV show The Flip Side. That's why we're making these episodes of comedy that go the other way. A couple of wonderful things happened last week. Uh, first of all, The Flip Side's doing really good. Our numbers are improving. People are finding our show. We're on YouTube America, by the way. I should say that for the podcast. Uh, and then th this other thing happened. I had three appearances on an L.A. radio station, uh, The Sound. Yep, 100.3, One, The Sound. The Sound. I think that's the one I listen to at Christmas time because they do the Christmas carols. I think everyone does the Christmas carols around Christmas time, Michael. But it was awesome. Um, the dude, the the guy, his name is Mark. Yes. Uh, he introduces me on Monday. He goes, this this guy, Michael Loftus, he has a TV show, The Flip Side. He looks at news from a different uh, perspective, which I thought was a great intro. And we had a blast. We had an absolute blast. He had me back on Wednesday. We had a blast. He had me back on Friday. We had a rockin' good time. 
I can't wait to do it again. You can have a difference of opinion, and you can still laugh about it. So we're off to the races. So Sarah Silverman, shame on you. Shame on you, you completely predictable person, you. Not a fan of the Sarah Silverman uh, stand-up comedy. I'd love to have her on this show, but it just seems very predictable. Well, isn't that comedy. what's fun Not about improv? Surprises. Isn't that what's fun about improv? When you know where the other person is going, then you can just sort of pick it up and build upon it, and then you just end up with this beautiful Sunday of liberal conservative comedy. <laughs> hey, here's a, here's some more funny anecdotes from the the DNC in Philly. Yep. They had to build two walls there. They had to build up two walls to keep the protesters back. And you had to show your ID at least uh, once. Some people had to show their ID three times to get in. So I guess you can you can have walls to protect your own property, but uh, having a wall to protect America is a bad idea. And I guess it's okay to show uh, a photo ID when you're coming into a convention, but you don't need one to vote. Well, and again, we've talked about this in the past because this is where you and I have a little bit of disagreement on the subject because when you are at the general election, everyone gets to vote. You can vote for Hillary. You can vote for Trump. You can throw away your vote and give it to Jill Stein or Gary Johnson, and that's where everyone has a voice. But don't think for a minute that these parties don't have biases. They are fraternities. They are sororities. They want their people in, you know, and at the end of the day, Regardless of how it happened, their approach is that Bernie Sanders lost. And as we've said on this podcast, we don't cater to the losers. I, I can't believe that you are so just like okay with someone trying to rig an election. I just can't believe it. Well, because here's it. At the end of the day, it's true they had their biases. But nothing I've read in the emails shows that they actually had any effect. I'm offended by the fact that they tried. Let's say let's say it didn't work. Let's say it didn't. Let's say Hillary's not the nominee. They tried. They tried and no one cares. They control the media and no one cares. Well, but isn't it just really complaining about the fact that they control an antiquated media system? Because let's not pretend like the 24-hour news network isn't on the outs at the moment. The majority of people are getting their news from the Internet, and that's what is allowing for we the people to actually rise up and get the real news and then complain when there are liberal biases on Facebook and Google, which they – That would be glitches. wonderful. That would be wonderful if it was true at all. Like, wow, how much of this treat – how much of this – tea or, or, or uh, lemonade or Kool-Aid do you suck down every day? It's unbelievable. You go to Google, you go to Google, dude, and, and Donald Trump's name wouldn't even appear if you Googled uh, presidential candidates a couple days ago. If, if you're popular on Facebook and you're a conservative, they make you go away. If you have a voice of conservatism on Twitter, they make you disappear. And no one seems to care. There's a young man by the name of uh, Edmund Burke. Uh, old Edmund Burke said this. I love this quote. The only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. You, Andrew Apple, are a good man, and you are doing nothing. You know what, Michael? That's not true, because I'm here with you right now. So by definition, not only am I doing something, but I am helping your cause. So you are being offended. complicit. You're, there you are. There you are. You're so. Wait, are you offended about what I said? I'm offended, offended that offended you said about... I'm doing nothing. If, if 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 you listen, if you want to go off, and if you just want to talk to yourself on this podcast, you're more than welcome to. But I'm here with you, trying to help get a more moderate message out there and actually make the Republican Party fun again. A party that can actually have a conversation that isn't just yelling at people, because that's what the stereotype is right now, Michael. So you're cool with the with like one one party owning the mainstream media. They don't own manipulate, the media. Manipulating well, they don't have the bill of sale in their hands, but when you're when you're writing for Politico and you have to send your articles into the DNC before they're published, isn't that a bit problematic? I mean it's no different than groups like MRC trying to get in with Fox News at the same way. There is a balance. And what you're fighting for is a system that doesn't appeal to everyone the way that you seem to think it does. Like, we're the balance out here. I mean, if this was 20 years ago, you and I wouldn't even have this platform to go off and do the flip side and to have this podcast and have a video like what we got with Cheryl Atkinson this week. Very, very good. Did you did you see that video? I 
posted that video, Michael. So, so you <laughs> did you watch it? Yes, I did. So you're okay with CBS News sitting on a story that would have changed the outcome of a presidential election? You know, they sat on this. You're okay with that because because David Rhodes' brother Ben Rhodes, who runs CBS News, said, "Don't put it out there." I just can't believe you're not outraged by it. What I'm out- uh, see, it's so like so blase, blase. I'm okay with the official. No. See, it's everybody is cool. Everybody's cool with democracy when it works out for them. Everybody's cool with fascists, and that's what the Democrats are right now. They are behaving like. It's funny that they always call Donald Trump, you know, like the uh, the Nazi guy when they literally use like Nazi tricks to get their way. Well, and everybody's cool. No, with no, no, it. hold on, hold on. I don't think that everybody is cool with it. I'm not cool with it. I'm also not cool with the autocratic tendencies that Donald Trump is putting out there. He is creating a narrative where he is saying, "I alone am the only one who can fix this problem." And that's not true. If you think for a moment that Donald Trump is the only one who can make this country great, well, then I have got some amazing land in Venezuela that you would love to buy into, Michael. I would love for you to do the whole quote. Once again, it's this thing where Donald Trump called all Mexican rapists. No, he didn't. Donald Trump said he's the only one that can fix this problem. And you know what? When it, when he was speaking about terrorism, you know what? I'm going to go with him on that. He is the only one. He is the only one. Because you know what Hillary's uh, solution was? Here's Hillary's solution. Let's get, we're going to work with uh, forces on the ground from the coalition of the willing who are already there, and we're going to do airstrikes. Her big plan is to do the same thing they've been doing for eight years. And Venezuela, I love how you, that, that was a good try to pivot. I appreciate you throwing me the lifeline there, buddy. Venezuela, that's a lovely little system. Oh, it's a mess. There's no question about it. Yeah. The, get ready to be forced to work on a farm. Literally, literally, the Venezuelan government is going to start rounding people up to tell them to, to work on farms. I, I don't think that we can talk about how socialism is great. I don't think you can ever bring that up even at a cocktail party. I, I agree with you 100% there. And just so we're clarifying, Venezuela passed a law that they now have the power to force people to go work on farms in order to help fight the food shortage. They can take them away from from their jobs and force them to go ahead and help make food for the rest of the country. And no one, no one thinks that's okay. Yeah, that is a little bit scary. I love the Nazi tactics that the Democrats used in the convention. Uh, that was great. How they didn't have any American flags, right? They didn't have any American flags. And then suddenly when the Bernie protesters were sneaking in, they literally would wave the giant American flags like in front of the signs they were holding, literally wrapping themselves up in symbols of our country to, to uh, uh, quash somebody's freedom of speech. That's total. That's like total. That's Nazi Party 101. Michael, unlike the Republican Party, they actually allowed people to actively protest during people's speeches. You heard people yelling Goldman Sachs and we trusted you during some of the major Democratic speeches. Those people that got was in, awesome. Michael. I that agree. Was it awesome. was awesome. Did you see the big uh, the big sign that they unfurled during during Hillary's speech? Tell me about it, Michael. I can't remember what it said, but it never uh, never got any airtime. You can see where she's up on stage and everybody looks up off to the side, and then the camera quickly cut away. I thought that was funny. The other thing that I was funny, uh, like everybody turned into Hitler this last presidential election. Like Laura Ingram, when she gave her speech at the RNC and she did that wave, the, the internet blew up with Laura Ingram as Hitler. And then when the DNC started, there's a point in everybody's wave where their hand just looks like that. Then uh, Pocahontas, uh, Elizabeth Warren, she did it. And so uh, she was Hitler for a little bit. But it, obviously, it didn't get as much play as Laura Ingram, right? When you call Pocahontas Hitler, that's really bad. So when Hillary comes out, when Hillary comes out, and I've got it on my DVR, her arm goes up. She's about to make the wave. And... and uh, they cut away. They cut away before anybody could even get a screen grab of it. Every single time they cut away so you couldn't turn her into Hitler. I think you're giving the media a little too much credit there. I've worked in those control rooms. Most of those guys are just thinking about what the next shot is most of the time, Michael. You know when I am you know when I know you're un, I'm under your skin? When's that? You use my name in every other sentence, Andrew. Yeah, they cut away before she could do the Nazi salute. 
It was funny. And then I liked how at the beginning of her speech, they didn't have all the American flags out yet. So only the people down in center had flags and the upper decks were empty. So they had to use certain camera angles to cover that. Yeah, they don't they don't think about that. They don't think about that at all. No, of course not. In fact, what you're alluding to is what a lot of people are making the argument that as a whole, the Democrats actually did have a better production than the Republicans did. And there was a lot oh, they, more... they certainly did. Yeah, they I... certainly did. I mean, and it's great. It's it's a it's a it's a wonderful it's a wonderful illustration of uh, everything wrong with the Democratic Party. So planning is wrong. Putting forethought into things is wrong, Michael. Oh, uh, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. I'm using your name, Michael. I, I know. I, I, I'm serious how much about money, this. How much money did, did they spend? How much money to have Chandra Rhimes direct a video? How much money for Morgan Freeman to do the voiceover? How much money for Paul Simon? How much money for all the flags they had to buy because people couldn't bring their own because they don't own them because they're not patriots? Well, let's not pretend that this isn't something that was happening across the board. I mean, days before the election, the Republicans, they were calling up Sheldon Adelson saying, hey, we don't have enough money for this. Can you throw in six million dollars? In fact, the other thing, they actually went to Justin Bieber and Nick Jonas and offered them millions of dollars at the Republican National Convention to put on free concerts. They didn't even want to show up. Oh, no. And what did we do without Justin Bieber? I'll tell you what I just love how... We got Scott Bayo, Michael. Yeah, I still can't believe that one. I still can't believe that one. What about it? What? That they got Scott Bayo? Like, of all the people, really? Chachi? Like, of all the people. Oh, and I mean, the, the only reason he was there was because Donald Trump asked him to do it. And it, it was, and this was all on record. Scott Baio came out and said, "Yeah, about a week before the convention, I was seeing uh, Donald Trump, and we chatted for a bit. And then he said, "Hey, you know what'd be great if you spoke at the convention." And you know, here, here's where I have guilt, like enormous guilt. I didn't even see what Chachi had to say. Chachi might have been brilliant, but I missed it. Uh, I, I hate to break it to you, he he wasn't. Was he better than Chelsea? I'd say he was on par with Chelsea. Boy, I tell you what, she's got her dad's looks, and her dad ain't Bill Clinton, that's for sure. Oh. You want to have some fun? Oh, dude, you want to have some fun? Google uh, uh, Chelsea Clinton's real dad, and you will be shocked. You will be shocked. Actually, my favorite was when, and I, I sent you this tweet earlier this week, it's like, have we ever really seen Chelsea Clinton and Debbie Wasserman Schultz in the same room at the same time? There is, a, there is a similarity there. That was very funny. But, man, somebody had me Google Hillary Clinton or Chelsea Clinton's real dad. And God love her. God love Chelsea for coming out uh, and trying. I think she just had a baby backstage, right? It was, like, it's, it's been a couple of just months, had a but baby. yeah. She poured herself into a, an extra strength pair of Spanx. She threw on that red dress, and she came out trying to do it. That was fantastic. God bless her for trying. But, like... Hillary Clinton choking back the fake tears. There was way too many choking back the, the fake tears. I don't like that. Like uh, Michelle Obama choking back the tears. Everybody, uh, Hillary Clinton choking back the tears. Everybody was choking back the tears. Like, hey, we get it. You're emotional people. You're very emotional. Now suck it up and act presidential. <laughs> I can assure you, Michelle Obama will never have to act presidential. No. She wakes up every morning in a house that was built by slaves. <laughs> hey, guess what? You're not going to be living there much longer. That is true. Problem solved. That's why it's only like a four-year lease. <laughs> so you wake up in public housing that was built by slaves. <laughs> uh, do you think Donald Trump uh, should forego the public housing? Do you, th do you think he, he should find his own lodging if he becomes president? No, he'll live in the White House. But it is public housing. Yeah, of course it is. It's For the sake of the joke, I'm literally writing that down. I have to do that on stage. <laughs> it's public housing. Hey, Donna Brazil says she's got – Donna Brazil's the new head of the DNC, by the way. Yep. She was actually in – she was actually in some of the emails saying she can't even talk to those Bernie Sanders people. She'd cuss them out. So she's got a fix. Uh, she doesn't have a fix to the media. And she doesn't have a fix to rigging elections. But here's what she's going to do. She's going to fix the glitches. She's going to fix the glitches, uh, I guess, to make it harder to hack. Uh, she's going to clamp down on the language so you can't call them taco bowls anymore. You actually have to call them Latinos. Oh. Uh, and hold yeah. on, hold on. Wait, wait. I, I, I take issue with that because if you looked at the email you're referring to, 
What date was that email sent, Michael? I don't know, Andrew. It was sent 6 de Mayo, May 6th, the day after Cinco de Mayo, right after Donald Trump tweeted out the picture of the taco bowl. In context, oh. that kind of makes sense. Okay, so we can call them taco bowls. You if you're down with it, bowls. I am. You can call them no, taco bowls. No, you're the bowls, guy. You're, you said you're okay with it. You said you're okay with it, Andrew. No, Andrew. I'm saying Andrew. I'm, a, I'm yeah, okay I heard with making you. Donald we can, Trump. We can roll it back. You said you're okay with it. I'm okay with making fun of Donald Trump. You know who else I'm okay with making fun of? Hillary Clinton, yes, Donna indeed. Brazil, Bill Clinton, Chelsea Clinton, huh. uh, Barack Obama, Michelle Obama, everyone who appeared at the DNC, all the fascist thugs who ripped signs out of people's hands and covered up their freedom of speech with an American flag. Am I close? Well, you left out Jill Stein and Gary Johnson, but yeah, you're not far off. Jill Stein and Gary Johnson. Good Lord. Again, again, you, you got the like the secret little pivot points. I love it. Here's my message to those guys. Yes. Here's my messages to Jill Stein and the Gary Johnsons of the world. Like, I'm terrified of a two-party system, too. I don't like uh, the idea of just two choices. However, don't start this stuff a couple months before the election. Here's what you need to do. Gary Johnson, if you're listening, write this down. Jill Stein, write this down. The day after the elections, start working on the next election, okay? Actually, they could start it today. As, as this show broadcasts, start working on 2020. Start building a little infrastructure. Start getting some money together. Get some T-shirts printed up. But don't start this movement a couple months before the real the real election is going on. Well, actually, I hate to break it to you, Michael, but Jill Stein has basically been doing that. She ran in 2012. She lost miserably. Gary Johnson, he ran in 2012. Uh, he lost miserably. They have not gotten off the campaign. I think it's actually for the best that they keep their mouth shut. Otherwise, people are going to realize just how ridiculous and awful their platforms really are. Here's what I want to know. What was Jill Stein and uh, Gary Johnson doing in, like, say, December of 2012? Like, like Gary Johnson was probably ripping some bongs, thinking he can he can take some time off, and Jill Stein was probably out like hugging a tree or something. Actually, Get motivated, stay motivated. Both of them, they they were off talking about their ridiculous tax plans and what they're going to do to make this country amazing, which is actually going to hurt this country. We uh we got some footage of Gary Johnson, don't we? Yeah, yeah. Well, when we so, were when we were at Politicon, we uh. We got a little bit of his speech. I think we're going to do something fun with that. There you go. And good old Bill Clinton, he fell asleep during his wife's speech. Well, you know, he needed all that energy so he could get really excited about balloons. Oh, man. Have you seen the, have you seen the gif going around of uh, Hillary Clinton's face when she sees the balloon drop? Yep. It is hysterical. And as hilarious as it was, it was effective. Donald Trump, uh, he comes out this week and he says, you know, we're going to have the best convention ever. I personally guarantee that. And then after the convention is a complete mess and the Democrats have a better production, he swears it off and said, yeah, I just showed up. As if we're supposed to believe that Paul Ryan was the one who thought that it was a good idea for Donald Trump to enter in a cloud of smoke while Queens We Are the Champions plays. Somehow, that was cool. That was seriously that was the highlight of the convention. I, I that agree with WWE you. WWE entrance. But do we think that was anyone's choice besides Donald Trump? That's like I don't see the downside to it. So if it was Donald Trump's choice, that's cool. Yeah, but I mean, after the Republican National Convention was deemed to be a disaster, he just disavowed any connection to it. Meh, it doesn't matter. People got the message. Yeah, who? We all knew the Democrats were going to have a better convention. Could they have? Could they have bought more balloons? Could they have bought more confetti? Oh, my goodness. And, 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 and honestly, protests. the flip side of what you just said about dun, them dun, buying dun. this and buying that is that there was more forethought put into it. They had better talent. They had better production. They had better speakers because the mouthpieces who spoke for Hillary Clinton, whether you like them or not, Bill Clinton gave a great speech about Hillary Clinton. Barack Obama oh my gave a gosh. great speech. They, oh, Barack Obama, Barack Obama had a good speech. Yeah. That guy's great. But Bill Clinton's, like, that was so awkward and uncomfortable for me. Well, let's In not, 1971, I met a girl. Let's and you're not like, pretend oh, that God, that was let's... anything besides what it was. That was trying to humanize Hillary. Yeah. 
and and you can look at from WikiLeaks, they know that that the uh, Taco Bowl vote likes storytellers. So everybody started telling stories. But when Bill Clinton comes out there and starts going, in 1971, I met a girl, and everybody had the same thought. I hope he's talking about Hillary. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they did. And then she's like, I don't want anything to do with you. But he's like, I'm relentless. I was driven by urges I could not control. And, and then I'm waiting, I'm waiting for the part where, like, what's he going to do when it comes to the year where he got impeached? Oh, he forgot that year. What's, what's he going to do when he's talking about when he was bombing Saddam Hussein and he was bombing Bosnia? Oh, he's going to forget that year. What about the Monica Lewinsky years? Oh, that's right. Juanita Broderick? Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah but that's no he's different like, than oh, the Republicans awesome. not letting George W. Bush anywhere near the stage because then they'd have to talk about the 2008 financial meltdown that happened on his watch. He didn't show up, dude. He didn't want to be there. Doesn't, and, it's not like he wasn't invited. And that's what's interesting. I mean, I think that says a lot about the state of the Republican Party as a whole, when everyone who's alive and has actually held the job for president won't come out in favor of the guy that the Republicans have nominated. You know what? It truly, you know what truly frightens me about that, dude? What's that? Honestly, there is one person in this presidential race in the whole thing that has just always been a private citizen. He has never been sucking off the government heat, and that's Donald Trump. And that's what I like about him more and more and more. Well, what do you say to those whose response is he's absolutely been sucking off the government heat because his four bankruptcies were using the government laws to get out of paying people? Andrew, I don't think he's ever cashed a check other than a, uh, a tax return check that was issued by the, the federal government. And that's where you're government. wrong, actually, Michael. You know where he did cash a check? He took money where? from 9-11. The government gave money to people whose buildings actually had been damaged by the attacks. And even okay. though none of his buildings were damaged, he still put in and got a $150,000 check. Okay, so he got $150,000 from the government. So is, is, the, is, the, is it the amount that offends you? No, it's the fact that he took the money when he didn't deserve it. If his buildings had been okay, damaged by okay. no, no, listen Hold to on. me for a second. If his buildings had been damaged by the by the terrorism, by the events of 9/11, absolutely, he's entitled to it. We're stronger together. We're going to help rebuild. But there was not a single Trump building that was affected by anything that happened on 9/11, and he still got money. Okay, so he's a bad guy. You are outraged by that. You're outraged by people who get money uh, who don't deserve it from the government, right? So how much money did Hillary Clinton make while she was Secretary of State? How she, many hundreds of millions did she rack up as Secretary of State? There was uh, Harry Truman. Harry Truman once said, it is impossible to get rich as a public servant. It is impossible. It can't be done. If someone is getting rich while being a public servant, they are crooked. I'm paraphrasing. Of course. Now, what you're actually talking about is the Clinton Foundation, Foundation, which is why I'm very happy to report that the IRS is doing a full audit of them right now. So we're actually going to have the information. OK. And is this the same IRS that you trust after they targeted Tea Party groups and use their power to target people on the other side of the aisle? So you're going to trust them? See, here's the problem. Once you start letting this stuff slide, it, this is why people say things like it's a slippery slope. Actually, I think they say slippery slope because it's fun to say slippery slope. Most things it's that people very say slippery. are slippery slope is, actually aren't. It is very fun. But I don't I don't trust the IRS to tie their own shoes. And what a what a lovely, lovely, lovely uh little uh piece of work the Clinton Foundation is. They give a, they do a lot of work. How many schools did they start and not finish? But again, Michael, that's something you can say on the other side. It's no different than Donald Trump calling on Russia where he has business ties to hack more of Hillary Clinton's emails. Oh, what a joke. What an absolute comedy that is. What an absolute comedy. Did you see where he said that? Yeah, he said it from a bully pulpit. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I don't know Putin that much. I know this. I know Putin would uh, respect me. And if he does have the emails, I'm telling you, I'd love it if he released them. That's I'd not, love it if he released That's not what he said. That is not what he said. You want to get the quote right? Here was the quote. Yeah. And Russia, please, if you can, help us find some of Hillary Clinton's 30,000 emails. I'm sure you will be rewarded, dot, 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 by the media in this room. Yes, it was hysterical. And Russia, if you got them, please, I'm sure you'll be, yeah, it, was, it wasn't like he was actually begging them.
Not like Harry Reid. Did you see what Harry Reid did? What did Harry Reid do? That 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 wonderful hey. ball, Harry Reid. Harry Reid says, Don, he goes, I want, I want the CIA to give Donald Trump fake intelligence reports. And the reporter said, what? And Harry Reid goes, they, should, they shouldn't give him the real reports. He's too dangerous. They should make fake ones. And the, and the reporter goes, wait, are you asking the CIA to lie? And then, and then Harry Reid is like, dole. He realizes what he just did. And he's like, uh, I've never lied. <laughs> And yes, you are correct. Harry Reid is a crazy old bag. And he's, yeah, and he's and leaving he's the dirty. Senate for that very reason. He's corrupt as all get out. Well, I mean, also, let's not pretend like there's any actual policy behind giving any sort of security briefing to the candidates. I don't think that they should be doing it at all. I don't think Trump should get it. I don't think Hillary should get it either. That was something that was started as a courtesy during the well, Truman administration. According to Google, Trump isn't even a candidate, so we don't have to worry about that. Well, I hate to break it to you, Michael, but according to Google, Leia dies in Star Wars Episode Eight. Why would you even say that? Because I Googled that, and according to Google, it's true. So everything Google says must be true. See, here's the weird thing, man. Like, it, it's, you, you, you systematically are okay with, like, censorship. It's really starting to disturb me. Like, like I know we're joking around and stuff, but, like, you are consistently, like, cool with it. What I'm cool with is the fact that we have a system of corporations who have their own biases, and nobody's denying that for a moment. And what continually happens is that every time a corporation tries to do something in their own service that affects the public, the public rises up and calls them on it. In the same way that happened when Facebook was censoring conservative news, it comes out, and guess what? They have to fix it. The same and guess what? Hold up. They didn't. They didn't, they didn't because because a, because a couple months later, Andrew, they started censoring people who were trying to leak link stories to WikiLeaks. And they again, got busted. They, they got, got busted, busted funneling the news. And, and now they're like, we're going to get their band it. together and have a big hug fest. And then a couple weeks later, they did it again. So who's watching the watchers? They'll just do it again. So I'm looking at Google right now in the trending topics. Let's see. What do we got? First one, it's about Donald Trump. Uh, fourth one, it's uh, about Hillary Clinton. Fifth one. Okay. Okay. So about... no, this is a good. This is a good starting point. What's the What's the headline on the Donald Trump uh, uh, article? Uh, it talks about uh, Ghazala Khan. What's the headline? It says, "Mother of U.S. soldier pens op-ed saying Donald Trump knows nothing about sacrifice in response okay. to his MSNBC interview and what he uh, okay. sacrificed." Okay. Okay. That's cool. So now, what's the uh, headline on Hillary Clinton? Uh, businessman Mark Cuban endorses Hil Hillary Clinton for U.S. president. <laughs> there you go. So the Donald Trump one is negative. The Hillary Clinton one is positive. And then right below that, Donald Trump, Republican presidential candidate, responds to fallen Muslim soldier. I don't think you're understanding what I'm trying to say. No, no. I understand what you're trying to say. You don't like the fact that the things that are making their way to the top aren't conservative. No, I don't like the fact that the Donald Trump or even even before Trump with any Republican candidate every time words are used and things are are issued forth in such a way as to put a negative spin on them. Right. Like whenever George Bush would have an initiative, uh, George Bush struggles to get his uh, message across. George Bush desperately tries to get his message across. And then when, a, then when a Democrat candidate does it, they use more like optimistic, uplifting words like uh, Hillary Clinton gave the speech of her life. It was very stirring and uh, hearts are lifted. You know, it, they, they never use words like she struggles to do this. She desperately has to do that. It's stuff like that. That's what bugs me, which is why I have wanted to do a TV show that, that was a, a funny look at the left. Because the the right is is always painted with this broad brush of negative and struggling and desperate, and the left is always the fun, emotional, optimistic. So sometimes it's a very very lonely place where I come from. It's a super de duper lonely place, and the struggle is real. And I just like fair fights. Here's what I want out of my political party. Here's what I want out of the right. I want uh, fair taxes. I want them to protect the borders. 
and fix the roads, and everybody should have an army ready to go in case uh, the crap hits the fan, right? Absolutely. Now, what do you want out of a political party? I want a party that protects its people in the best way there possible. There you go. Fantastic. I am down with that. So Excellent. there's our common ground. Yes, indeed. So in celebration of that, here's what Hillary Clinton says. This is a quote from It Takes a Village. Hillary Clinton says, I believe the primary role of the state is to teach, train, and raise children. Parents have a secondary role. Now, if that doesn't just frighten you, as a citizen of the United States, I don't know what will. But the Michael, state out is of supposed context, to raise the children. I guarantee I could find something that you've said or something that I've said or something that Donald Trump has said that could scare you as well. Okay, maybe something we said, she put hers in a frickin' book. There was proofreaders who looked at that. There were editors who looked at that and said, are you for real? Yeah, Do you really want to say this? And she said, you bet. I believe the primary role of the state is to teach, train, and raise children. Parents have a secondary role. And I'm very glad that none of those editors are in public policy. They are all private citizens who just want to sell a book. Yeah, so it doesn't bother you at all that that's her vision of government. If you want to have a quote war, I am game. Let's let's do an entire podcast where we just find the most <laughs> offensive thing that every candidate has ever written down and take it book. out of context. And here's the problem. We can't do that with any of Donald Trump's books because he didn't write them. Ew, that hurt. <laughs> I'm smarting. I have a bruise. Yeah, well, you know what? He made the money. He proofread it. You know what you can do? What's that? You can ice skate. You can ice skate at the woman ice skating rink that he fixed. I know you can do that. Yeah, he, um, he actually made a tight little profit off of that. That's nice. Yeah. Good for him. He he came in under budget and ahead of schedule. You should. I'm I'm all for that. Do you remember? <laughs> Before I moved to California, the Northridge earthquake and the government looked at those uh, freeways and said it's going to be years. 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 And then they, they contracted it out to a private uh, contractor. And they're like, if you can fix it fast, we'll give you a boatload of money. And that dude fixed it fast. It was amazing. Remember the fires in the Iraq war Absolutely. when Saddam Hussein was set and everybody's like, it's going to be years. It's going to be years. It's going to be years. You give people a financial incentive. Boom. Fires are out. Moving on. It's wonderful. Either way, either way, um, it's not going to be the end of the world, Andrew Apple. It's not going to be the end of the world because supposedly that was going to happen a couple of days ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, and you and I are on the same page on that one. Anytime someone says it's going to be the end of the world, unless there's a giant meteor or the return of dinosaurs, I, I, I just, you know, don't lose any sleep over it. Here's when I feel bad. I feel bad when I miss an end of the world scenario. Right. Remember the what was it? Twenty twelve. Yeah. It was supposed to end there. Yep. I was on top of that. I was there. I was hanging out like, is this it? I hate it when it's the next day and I find out about it. Do I don't, see? I don't even know how the world was supposed to end. How was that supposed to happen? You know, in twenty twelve, the reason that they said it was supposed to end, we didn't know. How. Oh, I knew that one. I knew that one. I'm talking about the one a couple of days ago. Oh, the one a couple of days ago was there were a few people who said that because of how the planets were going to align, there was going to be some sort of cataclysmic event that was going to cause the world to ultimately destroy itself. That's the second time they've used that one. That's the one was they it, always use. That was the harmonic convergence. The the once in ten thousand years all the planets line up. You can't say something only happens once every 10,000 years and then come around another year later and go, here we go again. <laughs> and yet, they did. And they did. Okay, Andrew, I have bad news. Uh-oh, what's that? We're at war with North Korea. Oh, my God. Michael, you can't be serious. I'm just finding out about this. Evidently, they've declared. Uh, and that's what, again, I feel like I feel the same way about this that I do about the end of the world. How am I finding out about this just now? Well, I'll tell you about this, Michael. I take this about as seriously as I take my eight-year-old cousin declaring war on nap time. Right? What, here's what, I, what, what, did, what did we do? How are they justifying this war? And are they seriously at war? I mean, have they, like, mobilized? I mean, they, they have not mobilized. They cannot mobilize. They are trying desperately to get the weapons to mobilize. What, what they're upset at us for is the fact that we are the evil West. And that's what okay. they're always upset about. 
So they declared war pretty much for no reason. Exactly. They're like, we declare war on you. And we're like, why? And they're like, oh, you know. And if we have to tell you, uh, so they are, the, they are the, the angry girlfriend of the world. Yes. If I have to tell you, I don't want to even have to do that. Okay. This has been an action-packed, anti-censorship, uh, I enjoy a fair fight episode. We got to bring it home now, and we got to bring it home strong with some Michael Topias. Sounds good to me. Do you want to know something? What's that? Uh, Cheryl Atkinson, Cheryl Atkinson, the former CBS reporter, mm -hmm. uh, who turned me on to that whole CBS is in the uh, we rig elections business. She watched our show, and she says her favorite part, Michael Topia. Oh. So, uh, Cheryl Atkinson, this goes out to you. These are some Michael Topias. See, the world, the real world is crazy, and a lot of stuff doesn't make sense. But in Michael Topia, we have laws and rules, and everything makes sense. Actually, so Andrew, what do you got? Well, my first one in Michael Topia. Every time you give a shout out, you have to do it in your Casey Kasem voice. But that's not my real Michael Topia. My real <laughs> Michael Topia is this. In Michael Topia, unless you are promoting a platform of legalizing marijuana, you aren't allowed to use marijuana as part of your platform protest. This week, there were anti-TPP protesters in Philadelphia who decided that their way of protesting was to write their message on the side of a giant stick of weed. Wow. And that must have been a huge stick of, a, a stick of weed? Yeah. I believe, the, I believe they called it a blunt... Oh, so it's like a giant joint? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Didn't, and then at the end, did they light it up? Uh, no, it wasn't real, Michael. There wasn't actually anything uh, in there. See, that would, see like, I'm, 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 a, I'm of the frame of mind that you got to have a real one. Then you got to fire it up and, and get everybody a little, little contact buzz. Okay. Mine is going to seem uh, not as fun as yours. Okay. In Michael Topia, there are no more pop-up bowls of popcorn. Orville Redenbacher sells these pop-up bowls of popcorn. They cost the same amount as the bag of popcorn. You get considerably less, and it's horrible. It's a bad product, and we don't sell pop-up bowls in Michael Topia. I'll tell you what we do in Michael Topia. If what do we do? If you are willing to spend a little extra money, it costs you about 40 bucks. This is not a sponsor, but it's one of my favorite products. You go to Bed Bath & Beyond. And they have this dome popcorn maker where you add the oil yourself, you put the kernels on top of it, you buy the raw kernels, you add your salt. It is as good as movie theater popcorn in your own home. Microwave popcorn does not hold a candle to the stuff that you can make movie theater style. Okay. In Michael Topia, they want to know, how easy is that thing to clean? Uh, very, very easy, actually. You sponge it off at the end, and the dome that you hold the popcorn in, which turns into the bowl, dishwasher safe. Get out of Dodge! Absolutely. In Michael Topia, they smile upon this, and they're thinking about going today. <laughs> All right. In Michael Topia, moving on from popcorn, in Michael Topia, if you are going to jump out of a plane, you must have a parachute. Some dude named Luke Akins just became the first guy to jump out of a plane at like 25,000 feet or whatever, and he landed in a net. He lived. He made it. He did it. It's possible. Why do we not celebrate this in Michaeltopia? I don't know why you would do this, but I'm glad someone did. It's, oh my gosh, it scares the heck out of me. Like, this dude's like nuts. Just absolutely not they told him going up in the airplane like no you have to do it with a parachute you have to have a parachute you don't have to open it if you don't want to but like on the way up he's just like screw it i'm gonna go for it no parachute he jumps out of the plane he lands in a net and we and that's and crazy at the very least i applaud him for this because i'm glad we have those kind of dreamers the guy who wakes up and says he wants to jump out of a plane and live and not use a parachute and then figures out a way to do it. That's the kind of people we need in this country. That is, you are exactly right. The dreamers, the, the people with the can-do attitude. Absolutely. All right. All righty. You have one more? I got one more for you, all right? Okay. And, and the, the, this is a little bit of a hot one, but I think it fits, all right? Now, 
In light of North Carolina overturning its voter ID laws, in Michaeltopia, we do not have any voter ID laws. If you want to show up to vote six times, you can. But every time needs to be in a different costume, with a different accent, a different name, and a whole different personality. I think if you love this country so much that you want to show up every single time, and we have people good enough at our polls to do it, I say good on you. You know what? For a heartbeat, I was ready to agree, but like the Democrats <laughs> would find a way to like hire writers and make it so where people didn't have to make up their own backstories, they'd have one provided for them. So that's where you, that's where you lost me. And you know and what? Just, Here's the thing. And I think that's why I'm saying writers. we got to have good people who are standing at the election. I, I don't know uh, if you remember this because uh, it, it's I, I, it's been a while since since we voted. It's been a few months, but I have the utmost respect for the people who have to sit there all day just while we get to come in and do our civic duty and vote. You know, because you know what they do in the meantime? They make minimum wage trying to track the census. Yeah. And I tell you what, those people know that they're not making very much money because they're mean. Every time I've been in to vote, they are not happy at all. I'm like, hey, I thought you were like a patriot. And they're like, I didn't realize it was all day. I thought it was like eight hours. This is like all day. Yeah, absolutely. But although, to be fair, to give them what credit they deserve, if you were sitting in a high school gym with no air conditioning from sunup to sundown, I think we might be a little bit cranky, too. There you go. My mom used to do it. My mom did it, and my grandmother did it. Good they would them. always, uh, oh, yeah, absolutely. We'd go in. I'd walk out, I'd walk down there and bring her her lunch. It was very, uh, very American, very awesome. All right, well, that is our show for this week. It was a good one. It was fire and brimstone. There was a lot of uh, getting up on soapboxes. It's not like that every week, ladies and gentlemen. I think the farther away we get from these conventions, and now we're in it. Now we're in the brambles, as uh, Br'er Rabbit once said. So fun will be had. Laughs will be laughed. Uh, dot coms will be dot commed, and Googles will be Googled. Oh, that's another... Michael Topia. And Michael Topia, uh, if you're a presidential candidate, you show up when they Google you. You're not allowed to just <laughs> not have somebody get Googled. All right. Andrew, a fine show, a heartfelt show. Yes, indeed. You have uh, you have another show that you have to go do. I you do. have a, a fantastic podcast. Yes, that's uh, So Fresh, So Prince. A friend of mine and I, we felt the need to relive the 90s. And week after week, we watch every episode of The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and talk about how each individual uh, episode holds up. We are watching them in order, top to bottom. And you know what was nice? I actually got huh. to see Brian Stokes Mitchell, former cast member of The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, on stage at the DNC what the, singing What the World Needs Now is Love, Sweet Love. And I don't care if you're a Democrat or a Republican, if you're a conservative, a liberal, or just a general anarchist. I think we can agree that what the world needs now is love. And we would love it if you go to iTunes and rate us five stars. See what I did there? Yes, yes, that's fantastic. And you know what else I love? Uh, people who take political signs and alter them to suit their own uh, purposes. <laughs> At the DNC, they had those signs that says, uh, love trumps hate. Yep. And a bunch of people turned theirs into love trumps hat. <laughs> <laughs> actually, my, my favorite was uh, someone actually took the stronger together sign and taped up the letters to say stop her. That's fantastic. That's great. We should shout you down with chants of Hillary. Hillary. Okay, well, hey, thanks for tuning in to The Loftus Party. Check out the flip side. We are on U2 America. We are independently syndicated from coast to coast to coast to coast. Watch it now before that border wall goes up and you can't get a signal. I'm Michael Loftus. Oi, oi. Head over to theloftusparty.com. You can find it all there. Oh, that's right. Good, good ad. See you, guys. <laughs> you are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. All writers are prone to becoming so attached to our characters and stories that we struggle to see why a passage may not be working. It takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our writing into full maturity. At Black Wolf Editorial Services, we strive to enable writers to develop and grow, shaping stories into masterpieces that can stand the test of time. Editing services are provided for all genres and all age categories. 
Services range from critiques of the short story through to the line edits of the full-length novel and copy editing for those preparing for publication. We also offer assistance on generating a writer's file for your website, as well as help with those book blurbs and promotional material. We won't abandon you to the masses. We want to celebrate with you and your successes. Black Wolf Editorial Services, nurturing your writing into maturity. For a full list of services and prices, visit us at blackwolfeditorial.com. Individuals and businesses with tax problems, listen carefully. Do you feel like you're losing control over your finances? If you owe over $10,000 in back taxes or have unfiled tax returns, we can help you take back control. The IRS is the largest and most aggressive collection agency in the world, and they can seize your bank account, garnish your paycheck, close your business, and file criminal charges. Take control of your tax problems now by calling the experts at Tax Mediation Services and take advantage of the Fresh Start program and new laws that may allow us to negotiate a settlement for the lowest amount possible. Our team of tax attorneys and enrolled agents can stop collections and get you protected so you can take control of your financial future. Tax Mediation Services is accredited by the Better Business Bureau. Call now for a free case review and a price protection guaranteed quote. Call Tax Mediation Services now at 800-610-9050. That's 800-610-9050. 800-610-9050. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable, everyday carry, or a tough-as-nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. 